I'm going to be the first therapist to tell you exactly what to do. Hello, hello. Welcome home to me. You're getting me on the home front. I had a lot of laundry today. I had a lot of laundry. What did I do? I did linens separately. Now that's duvet covers, two sets of sheets, about eight pillowcases. I did all of the linens. The cat sitter who was here watching Jocelyn, who's barely, she likes me for food, she cuddles, but I'm too aggressive with her. I scare her off, I have to be delicate. I'm working on being delicate. Thank you for joining us. You're joining us tonight, I am in no mood. I am home and the first thing I had to do was three loads of laundry. And the dryer, by the way, needs two spins. Do I overload it? You better believe I overload it. And I expect it to dry on one cycle. So sue me in 2021. You're getting in the queue. You are calling me tonight with anything. People called me for, people called me today about the stock market. I am here with your financial advice free of charge. I don't take a commission. I don't take a commission on every trade like these brokers. It's free to it's free advice. The call itself is not free. The advice financially speaking I'm not taking a commission per trade like people would. But the call itself is not free. What is the price? You tell me. This is, again, a pay-what-you-can show. You are contributing to the show at planetscum.live. Drop down Dyke Vice. It's pay-what-you-can. If I was doing this show live, you would come out to see me once a week, and you would gladly pay $10 to do so every single week. This is no different. The difference is maybe you have your own libations. Maybe you have beverages at home. And so you're getting them for a much fairer price. So actually, this is quite a deal. Plus, you don't have to wear pants. You are watching the show. You are contributing the show at planetscum.live. You are watching the show. You are calling into the show at 802-427-7286. Again, the call-in number is 802-427-7286. It's up there in the corner. Get in the queue. Stay in the queue. You think I want to be here? You think you're in the queue for 20 minutes and you've done it? I'm here the whole hour. I'm going to feel bad for you waiting in the queue. Please. We have a voicemail line. People have been leaving voicemails. When you are not able to join us, when you are not able to join us Thursday evenings only because you have work, nothing else is a reasonable excuse. I don't care if you're pregnant. I don't care that you're going into labor. You are calling in live. If you cannot call in live, you are leaving me a voicemail with your concerns, questions, thoughts at 702-706-DYKE. That is 702-706-DYKE. I am here for you, Ravi Hoffman, 24-7. Bryson, do we have any voicemails this week? Should we uh, a couple of voicemails? Yes, yes. Let's go to our first voicemail. And then I think we should take a call after that, Robbie. But here's our first voicemail. Great. Hi, Robbie. Uh, happy holidays. My question is about that. I'm getting gifts for all of my friends uh, post holidays uh, so that I can send them and there won't be all those lines at the post office, et cetera. And I'm wondering, a new cat owner, what sort of gifts would you want? I have a friend who just got a cat, uh, and I'm curious what you think. Thanks so much for everything that you do. Uh, much love. Thank you. Now, I am hoping that this caller also, there's nothing stopping you from leaving a voicemail and leaving a contribution for the show. The contribution line is open 24-7 at planetscum.live. So easy for a cat. And so what an easy, amazing thing, because no matter what, the cat's going to be thrilled. My cat likes the cheapest things. Those little mice, those little doll mice that you get at the pet store, you can get them anywhere online. They're like $3. 
the fancy, it doesn't with a cat, it's like a baby. It's not like the fanciest toy, the more it likes it. You never know with a cat. I have one little mouse that actually makes squeaks. Like it's like a mouse when you touch it. She loves that one. And she also likes the regular ones that don't do anything. These felt little mice. I would say send a couple of those toys. You don't have to get fancy with the stick ones and everything else. Sometimes they're in the mood to chase. Sometimes they're not. And that one you really have to interact with. The little mice you just leave around the house. They find them when they're in the mood. Keeps them occupied. I say get them the little felt mice. Don't try and be creative in getting them a whole cat tree. Some people, it doesn't work in their space. It's not a thing. That's a very specific item that only the pet owner should buy because they know the space they have, the decor. Is this going to throw off the entire house because they got a cat? Just stick to the small and simple cat toys. Cats tend to like the packages better than the expensive toys. Exactly. Cats love plastic wrap and stupidity and crinkling things. So any little mouse that crinkles or... The felt ones are the ones that squeak. I have one mouse. I can't find it. It squeaks. It's excellent. They think it's real. They're idiots. Okay, let's hit the phone lines again. You are calling me 802-427-7286. We are here the hour. Get in the queue. If you'd like me to answer your call, we will get to as many as we can in the hour. You got to call 802-427-7286. Stay in the queue. Support the show. Who do we have on the line? Robbie, I believe this is your sister we have on the Oh. Line. What do Hello. I owe family supporting the show? Devorah here. Club. Hi, what's happening? Debs, Hi. now we know people know I that I wanna... call you Debs. I know you go by Devorah, but we call you Debs right. family, and so so people aren't confused. But her name is Devorah. You All can't right. do Debs. You guys do Devorah. I've earned this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I call you Risky, not Robbie. Exactly. exactly. They're not calling me Risky. You so, call me Risky. We have our own names. We have our Jewish names that we do at home. And you guys stick to the names that we tell you. What's exactly. happening here? So um, I just want to say for those, many people may not know this, but, you know, Riv is an interior designer on the side, you know, one of her side hustles. And I yeah. just want to say, if you're willing to really go on the journey with her, you yeah, yeah. got to be prepared to question all your past choices and feel ashamed of yourself. You can get past that and really go on the journey. Oh, my, you've transformed my place. Oh, oh. my God. Deb's moved into this I, dream apartment in Vancouver. Can I, can I explain? So she moved into this yeah. dream apartment in Vancouver. She was in one of these like older, charmier places. After 10 years in charm, you're ready for new and works. Okay. Yeah. And she shows me- I had layout. mice. You know, mice, ter petrifying. Now she shows me the layout. Now oh. Debs works very hard. To her credit, works in- Debs, why don't you plug what you do? You work in tech sales. Are people able to get deals through you or nothing like that? Absolutely. Cost pricing. If you say you're Robbie's sister, uh, friend. Where do they know, I guess people want to talk show. to you. We don't want to say where you work, so forget it. Guys, DM me if you want a tech deal, and I'll connect you with Yeah, them. DM. Um, but I'm in tech sales. I can get great deals, um, you know, if you're – exactly. If you, you mention the show, I'll see what I can do. Exactly. So – she sends me the layout of the place that her friend wants her to do. I have it here. Okay. <laughs> let me so have embarrassing. It. Do you have all the pictures, Debs, like the old ones? Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. I, oh, here, yeah, I have yeah. it. I have, I have it. Okay, so it's one main space and a bedroom. It's a nice one bedroom, but it's Vancouver. For those of you who don't know, Vancouver are very similar to New York. Small spaces, even having a one bedroom is a huge success. And Mazel Tov to Devorah, who's worked very, very hard for years and years and deserves this apartment. Now, that said, we want to maximize the apartment. Her friends who. It's only still 465 square feet. 465 square feet. Her friends who allegedly helped her, I guess they knew the person who lived there before. <laughs> now, now, forgive the mess of this because obviously Devorah had just moved in and wasn't. Um, there we go with the focus. But they put the, 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 the couch in the middle. Do you see that? Do you see the couch is just dividing the entire space? Forget the mess of the move. 
They put her office, which Debbie now works from 24 seven at home in the middle in that corner blocking the door outside. I don't know why. And then her beautiful chair, which she really was excited about in this random corner that nobody would ever sit and read in. Debbie tried to pitch it to me as a reading nook. We know we're not doing the reading nook. Okay, this made me obviously- And hiding my beautiful carpet That's too. Probably nice of you to join us this birthday week. I'm not gonna be, I'm not, I have nothing bad to say. Happy birthday, Patrick. I don't know if it's 23rd birthday or 43rd birthday with Patrick, you never know. Okay, so you see this, and then they tried to pass up. So just to give you an idea of the space, this is a friend of yours, that the couch would be here and the TV would be literally two feet in front of her. Uh, I can't focus, Bryson, is this a you? Yeah. Okay, the, the the TV would be two feet in front of her. Do you see that? The most insane thing, because of course there's no space. Why well, can't? Yeah, see, there's no space between the couch and where the TV would have to be. Okay, that was a kitten that was at Debbie's house. So I literally lost my mind. You called and you were excited about the apartment, but you weren't as excited. And you were like felt cramped in it. Oh. What did we do then? Oh, within like two minutes, you said you hung up the phone with me. Within 10 minutes, I get these um, diagrams. Yeah. Do you have them? It was Let me look. I have them. Quick the sketches of the layout. So I right away and stretch out her space with where everything should go. I should. I, I wish I could send these to Bryson so he could do it. Bryson, if I send these to you, can you put them up? Uh, I could. You could also send them to your computer and you can initiate a screen share. Either one works. I'm sending them to you because I, I can't even imagine doing the one, other one you just said. Neither can I. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? He's funny. Honestly, within 10 minutes, I yeah. followed these diagrams. Of course, Riv told me to take my time. I was so excited because she nailed what I didn't have to say. Thing. Oh, yeah. And Connor, and obviously. I even ever considered the other. Right. I, I, I thought your friends were like, you know, when you have sabotage friends, they're like jealous of your place. So they try and make it like, yeah. I was also concerned. I mean, obviously that wasn't it. Obviously, it had been, we think, worst case. They saw the friend who lived there who you got the tip off about this apartment had it in this cramped manner for years and years and allegedly did not care to live in such a, yeah. a, a cramped space. But if we recall, I thought- When they saw, saw my room. unit that night, they were shocked. Like the same friend, she couldn't believe it. She was mortified at herself. I showed her the diagram and she's a designer. Oh my God. And she was really ashamed. I know. And it's these designers. I've always had a penchant for decor and taste and style. Now, I'm not the best, but I have a little bit of everything for anything. Okay. So I have a little bit of, of the interior design. I have a little bit of the fashion, a little bit of the finance. I'm really a jack of all trades in this, you know, in a real well, way. Well, what you said is some people can't think outside their own place. Some people just don't have, you knew right away. The they flow, might have the... a beautiful place, but they can't think for anybody else. So Bryson, yes, this yeah. is, so I sent this to her. Okay. And people who remember, I did I, I did uh, Cotner's Room. I We did Queer Eye on the Gethard Show. I still believe to this day, if Netflix is watching, I am your sixth queer eye. Why not have a dyke? But this is what I sent her. Oh, so yes. This is her entrance. You'll see we're on the bottom where I wrote entrance. If everybody Are you going to show the after photos? Yes, of course. Then the breakfast bar, which we ordered. We, she just got. She just got stools for that. Okay. And then we did her big blue chair is to the right. Okay. Spatial awareness is a dyke trait. Wow. The couch over there, the glass coffee table, which she was given a giveaway, even though she just bought it off Craigslist and loved it. Yeah. Okay. And then you'll see in the top right corner, either that credenza, which could be a bar too over there, or the office <laughs> and the TV above it. But you'll see the arrow. You'll see 
the detail in my my blueprints to her. Oh. The arrow indicates that pending she does the switch, I don't know if the credenza is best against that balcony wall or if the office is. We'll have to see. In the end, as you'll see in the after photos, it actually worked the better blueprint. the switched. Oh. The switch that the office would be where the credenza is in the because credenza. Because I like to work I like to work with in front of the window because I have the mm -hmm. nice view. But so in the end the credenza is against, you know, the the wall. Exactly. Which will look like you said, very nice with my mounted T V and the credenza is a bar. And then the balcony has this open space, which you can enjoy. I don't know why you would put a desk right in front of the door no. of the balcony. I still have PTSD, but moving on. Then I'll show you, don't move the picture yet. Don't move the picture yet. Debbie tells me, so she has this chest, which she loves, okay? And she has this glass table, as we saw. That was her electrician, which she didn't ever look where the glass table is in the old picture. Right next to that trunk and because there's nowhere to walk. So she's like, how am I going to keep this all? I said, what you're going to do is you're going to put that beautiful trunk under your transparent glass table. And voila, you have the nicest display of this trunk. And it gives it another layered look. Now, by the way, oh, the dimension know. and the texture is the texture. I, I lost my mind, Riv, I must say. The layering of the textures. That. Now, you'll notice that she has this carpet here. This carpet I had already told her to get. This Moroccan rug. I'm obsessed with Moroccan rugs on Etsy. They're now very expensive for some reason. But I love these checkerboard. My friend Sophie Blumenthal, shout out to her turn me on to these rugs. Now I knew Debbie was moving into a new spot. And I said, it's always nice to get at least one new thing when you move into a new spot. Why don't you look at these rugs? You've always loved the color, the color yellow. Her whole life, since she was a little baby, yep. she loved yellow. So she got it. But now it was just relegated to this corner, even though it's such a beautiful rug, it's only existing in this corner that truthfully be told, nobody's sitting in. So. I said it will add so many layers. Bryson, bring up the other diagram I sent you. And I recently put up the paintings. I sent them to text. I texted the, yeah. the Montreal beautiful modern photograph that you got me. And I finally have the paintings. That, oh, I don't know what I was thinking. Bryson, was do you have the other photo? Give me, yeah, just give me one second. But you knew Debbie was off too. You felt something. Like you felt I like. I knew. Yeah. I knew I had nice pieces and it was like, well, it was a saboteur nice. kind of and thing. Our right. Now I'm like. So this is how I explained her. She said, I don't understand the trunk. So if you'll see in the middle of this diagram, I have the coffee table, which is transparent and trunk under, uh, look, trunk under, look, trunk chest under. Okay. I put the carpet lengthwise that way, the couch center. And she was like, oh, I get it. The carpet has a nice perimeter. I said, leave it, you know, about half a foot at least off the wall. Leave it a perimeter. We're going to draw everything to this carpet. Okay, when you have people over, even small groups now in COVID or whoever's in your bubble, you can have, if you go back to the other chair, you can have your your somebody sitting on that big blue chair across from the couch, somebody even using the desk chair, this and that. Are we all ready for the before and after? What? The entire space, I just want to say before I show the, the, the before and after, is the space should be useful for multiple things. It should be useful for a singular space can have multiple uses. I think the problem with this initial design is it tried to make multiple spaces for multiple uses. But I think the better synergy is to have one space with multiple uses, not trying to make a bunch of different space that each only do one thing. This is now a space that does many things. She can work from it nicely with the window. She can sit on the couch and enjoy TV. She can have company and everybody can sit around. Having somebody in the big blue chair, somebody using the office chair, people sitting on the couch and even her breakfast bar. And so it's a space for everything in one. Rather than trying to compartmentalize, try and integrate. Here we go. 
So the before, as we remember, is this horror with the couch in the middle of the room, that glass table and the chest touching each other practically, the desk blocking the door for reasons I don't know. Then this was the after. I will show the initial after. Look at this. Look at this after. Okay? And it, it only evolved. Okay? Look at this after. Look at this. We have the chest under the glass table. We have her office in, right in front there. We have that right credenza. The TV will be right above the, the couch there. It feels so open. You could see the beautiful hardwood floors. Such an inviting space that small but feels somehow large again. We feel like we can move in it. Sometimes you have to work with the natural space. It was clear the couch just goes there. Putting it anywhere else would be shoving it. Okay, and she continued to expand. She continued, we got her lamp, we got her plants. Look at this lamp in the corner. The yellows, which again, she loves and I love for her. Okay, we put that big mirror up and we put it up there. She wasn't sure if that mirror could come. But of course it reflects the outside view. It reflects the balcony. So just adding more depth to the space and a way to save the mirror that she had at her old place, which she loved. Okay, so those are the before and the afters, I believe. Did I miss any? Can you show with my tools? Yes, oh yeah, with this, okay. Now we have even more afters. Then I decided, I said, the color is so nice in this space. We're really popping with the color. I think we should continue. She said, what stools? She wanted to get very basic stools, very safe choice stools for her kitchen. Now, sometimes the safest choice is the worst choice for design. Sometimes go with the thing you feel like that's too bold. That's the right thing to feel. Do it. As soon as you feel that, do it. Okay. I saw these baby blue powder blue stools really inexpensive they had the same ones at target and they had these at industrial west they had expensive ones and, but i wasn't concerned with you know you can get them cheap you get them expensive really the color the baby blue and the yellow i thought would be just an amazing immersement and mesh of color not for everyone debbie thought about it for a second as soon as she thought this could be too i really didn't think i would when she said powder blue yeah. i really did not think that i i, I would but Oh, the last I they came and look at that and look how open that space is now remember the couch was where the edge of the how do i do this bryce oh the couch remember was where the edge of the carpet is so imagine just cutting off that whole breakfast thing with that beautiful modern kitchen which she's never had a modern kitchen debs you've never had a dishwasher Never. Very new for our family to be living in a clean new space that was renovated just before she moved in. And you deserve it. We shared a room growing up. Me, you, you hoodies, so tight. You deserve this space all your own. Bunk beds. Thank Bunk you. Bunk beds the whole bit. And you really and helped me during that. Christmas with, you know, you were busy and you really took the time and spent hours helping me virtually. Honestly. Thank you, Tig Naruto. Yes, this is a little HGTV. Okay, you're contributing at PlanetScum.live with these with these designer tips. Go for the bold color. Go for something that makes you a little uncomfortable. That's what interior design should feel like. Because trust me, when it's together, you're like, this was the right move. You should feel a little out of your comfort zone with anything interior design. Make the bold choice. God, but I must say, Robbie, me. it's worth going with Risky on the journey, but be prepared to question all your choices. I sent her these crate and barrel stools I was prepared to spend my life savings on. Spend live, so live much with money. Tickets. 
I was sick about sick it. She found me these super cheap and these and are look, incredible. They're so, they're vegan leather, so comfortable. This is before the chairs were built. But look, she has her blue chair, all the different blues coming together in the corner there. So inviting. She wasn't going to sit in that, in that reading nook. Read there, facing outside. No. Facing your company. So that is it. Thank you for coming with me on this apartment tour. We will give you an update. We are working on your bathroom next, though I believe you figured it out. Looks beautiful. Okay. Thank Dad, you so much. Thank you for calling in and showing thank us your after. Again, you guys, this is a testament. If you need interior design help, this is the umpteenth time I've done it. I should be paid for this by now. I should have a show on HGTV for this. But instead, I'm doing a planetscum.live for a pay-what-you-can price at planetscum.live. Debs, I love you. I can't wait to visit, crash on that couch, and have the best time with you in your new space, which you deserve and you've earned. Thank you so much. Love you. We'll speak you tomorrow. You live. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. Bye. <laughs> Uh, guys, we're going to get to the phones. I know you guys have been patiently waiting. If you're in the queue, wait. We're getting to you in just a second. As you know, my merch has been off the chain. Thank you for everybody who is buying the merch. Okay, planetscum.live merch. The McGill Dykeby sweatshirt is selling quicker than the McGill sweatshirt itself. You know what we're doing? More short selling. The Dykeweiss sweatshirt. That's what we're doing. We're like the GameStop of the hoodies, of the McGill hoodies. They drove up the price of GameStop. We are driving up the price of Dykeweiss, and McGill is betting against it. McGill is betting against my sweatshirt. They want their sweatshirt, but we're betting against it. We're shorting it. Well, they try. they would try to short it. We're not letting them do that. We're driving up the price. You want your own McGill Dykeweiss sweatshirt. You're going to planetscum.live slash merch. I don't know how many we have left or what we ordered, how much longer we're on that site. Get them while they last. And this is just a small tip, a little birdie, something to do with YouTube management and algorithms, but we might be changing the name of the show. Which would mean, which would mean that this would be a relic. This would be vintage. This is really your only shot to have a sweatshirt from this era of the show. So I didn't really want to talk about that yet because I don't know how I feel about it yet. But it's something I'm eventually going to have to talk to you guys about. Are the algorithms hurting us? Is dyke too scary a word to share? This is the case. A dyke fight slusher might be no more very shortly. Bryson, who do we have on the line? We have Susie on the line. Susie, how can I help you? Hi. Hi. Um, okay, there's a lot to this one and I'm not quite sure how to put it like linearly. So I may jump around some. Yes. Um, yeah. So like, I don't know, I'm just having some family issues and like, I do not know what to do. Hit me. Um, Call the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, I guess, first part is like I'm trans um my parents haven't really been cool with that uh like we just kind of got to the point where it's like like they're putting like my name on like Christmas gifts but like they're they aren't they aren't like really like saying it or anything um and now because I don't want to talk to them about like my grades and like my school um they are Saying that I should like pay them three hundred dollars a month. Um, they came to where I live, 
which is like provided through my family, but still like they came to where I live uh, and like took three of my instruments and yeah, I don't know. And like, I have been like smoking weed as like a way of like dealing with this. Um, and they finally texted me today and we're like, Hey, no more smoking weed, which is scary for two implications. One being that they know I smoke weed, which I was trying to not key them in on, but I mean, yeah, I, you know, um, and then the other being that my sister who I live with is likely telling them things about me, which makes me feel like more uncomfortable and like less safe in that in that space fuck so you're asking what to do i'm just letting you continue right yeah yeah well yeah yeah sorry sorry for what you're going through obviously it's so shitty there's nothing else to say first off than it that shitty um how old are you Susie? uh i'm 21 you're 21. How old's your sister? Uh, 23. 23. And you guys close? I mean, you live together. What is we the were. Circ- yeah, what is the circumstance of you guys living together? You wanted to move out and your parents helped you out with it? Wait, Hello? could you repeat that? What's the circumstance of you guys Hello? moving out? You just, you guys were in school or you guys were moving out and your parents paid, offered to pay for it? Um, so what it is, it's, um, we are going to school in the town where my grandparents live. They had a house that they had kept around. Um, and then they like cleared it out so that my oldest sister could live there. And then like the rest of us have just lived there since. Okay, I see. Um, I don't know why they would take away your instruments. Um, what is, what is the deal with the money? Like, why are they, are they saying because you're trans, you must pay us $300 and because you're trans, we're taking away no. the instruments. Why are they taking away it's, the it's, instruments and, and asking for I don't money? I know why they took it. They're asking for money because they are now making me pay. So before, like, they had been, like, covering, like, my health insurance. Yeah. Um, you know, they had, like, provided for, like, my car. They were, like, paying for my phone. And so now they're saying, like, $300 a month to, like, go towards health insurance, go towards the car, go towards the phone. The instruments, I don't know. I, I best I can guess is, like, they were worried I would sell them because they've said some similar shit before. But, like, I, I, I mean, I it just feels hurtful. Um, and I feel like regardless of their intent, that's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah. Do you have a job or what are you in school? What Uh, is your main thing? Yeah. So I, I am mostly in school. I have a job. Um, but due to like a lot of reasons, mainly like COVID and mental health, it is hard to like work super often. Great, but do you have, do you get shifts? Is it, is it a shift type job? Is it freelance? What kind of work is it? Um, It's more like, more like freelance picking up shifts. I work as like a delivery driver for something that's basically Uber Eats, but isn't. Great. Okay, I think here's my honest feedback. Um, First of all, does your older sister, does she pay rent? Does she pay some type of stipend? No. She doesn't. No, neither of my older sisters pay anything. Why? So, are you able to ask your parents why only you? Um. I mean, yeah, I can. I mean, you might have to. I think three hundred. I think parents yeah. requesting some help and three hundred and teaching responsibility for the sake of teaching responsibility is great for punishment's sake. I think it's terrible. Um, first of all, it sounds like your parents have the means to take care of you guys in this way. Um, even though it's not something that everybody has, it's not something, you know, for instance, I didn't, uh, that's not something that was available to me. I believe very strongly that if parents have the means to help their kids out, 
little longer, they should. I think it is weird to me when a parent with means decides to hold it over their kids and isn't loving with their means. I think even if you have no means, be loving with no means. With means, be loving with means. Okay, I don't understand that. I do understand teaching responsibility, them wanting to urge your success, push you to stand on your feet alone. I understand that. But this intent doesn't feel like that. This feels like punishment for punishment's sake, which I'm really against. The fact that your older siblings, who presumably should be working a little bit longer than you, have never paid anything is worth a conversation. You definitely should have a conversation. Um, I think it's it's at the point that you have to have a conversation where it's like you're going to choose your prejudice over your daughter. Like, I don't want this to be a lifelong riff. If you want to have a relationship with your parents, if there's any decency left in them and you do have any care for them, you must ask them the same of you. Do they want a relationship with you? Are they willing to be petty and to let their prejudice and ignorance take away one of their children? Is there any religion, any doctrine, any anything that makes that feel natural the double standard between your your siblings not paying is extremely hurtful and you can tell them that if you're comfortable to talk to them so long as it's safe i would bring that up i would also bring up with the smoking weed that i do smoke weed you're 21 it's legal you're allowed to i don't think you need to lie to your parents anymore i think you need to be a grown-up you need to have an honest conversation with them, grown up to grown up, and say, I'm willing to help you out. I think the 300 is fair. What I don't think is fair is that it's just me and not the other two. That makes me believe that you're not doing it for me to stand on my own feet, but you're doing it to punish me. That feels cruel, unreligious, whatever it is. The other thing is I do smoke weed. I enjoy it. I do it recreationally. I do it legally. And it helps me cope naturally with some of the stresses that I'm obviously under. The third thing is the music instruments. I have no intention. I think you, I believe you took them because you thought that I would uh, sell them. I would never sell them. You have my word on that, period. Period. Now, my mother, as some of you know, and I don't always open up about this, my mother has become messianic some form of that is juice for jesus and even though my mother is was very open at a certain point she's now closed the openness on gay stuff she's let me know by the way if there's any kind of a wedding i won't be be coming but i also told her, believe me you're not invited but those words aren't coming from her my mother actually is is doesn't sound like your parents my mother my mother is very submissive and she's very easily sold and my mother actually doesn't have a bad bone in her body, but somebody is telling her she's doing something wrong. Somebody is abusing her mentally, telling her these things. She doesn't actually believe them. So we're able to have a relationship because I know my mother's intent is to love me. I know that people put poison in her and she's actually fought against it. She reaches out to me. She sends me clippings. She does things. I know that she feels it's wrong. And I can actually see her moving out of this religion because it's actually going against her natural moral compass where she knows in every religion that she's been a part of and we started with Hasidic Judaism and then she's done all kinds and now Messianic you know, Judaism, Jews for Jesus, her kid, she's known to value that. It's exactly like Robbie told me last week. We aren't trying to get credit for additional things. We are trying to make ourselves feel valued for things that are already happening. We are already doing. Exactly. So I think that if your parents' intent is not good, then we need to figure that out. And you need to let them know you're serious. You'll be conducting your life the way that you want to do your life. And you really hope that they'll be there in your life along for that. But I think you have to have a serious conversation when things maybe wait a week, maybe wait while things calm down and say, I really want to have a talk. This trans thing isn't going away. Believe me, who wants to go through this? Nobody.
And whether you agree with it or not, it's, 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 it's not even that. This is what I'm doing with my life. This is who I am. I'm happy to pay the 300, but if, but not because I'm the only one, not because it's a punishment. If you're genuinely looking out for me, that would touch me. If you're not, that hurts me. That's it. Susie, I hope I've helped you. I know it's a tough conversation, but I think it's your only shot. I'm not giving any guarantees with this conversation. There's obviously a lot of toxicity, but I'm giving you the chance, which you're going to have to do many times in your life, Susie, and you're only 21 but you're going to have to be the bigger person many times in your life. And it's a big burden to bear. I've had to be the bigger person many, many times. And it sucks at you that you have to be the one approaching with the conversation that you have to do this stuff. But it gives you the peace of mind that you did what you could to be a good person. And that's all. Susie, I hope I've helped you. Please keep us posted. I support you. I'm here for you. The whole community is. And good luck. You're going to get through this and you're going to come out stronger. And I think, you know, and I again, no guarantees. Don't tell me you had the conversation. When we're, there's no guarantees with this. This is all you can do. This is all you can do. You might be pleasantly surprised. But if you're not, it's just as bad as it was. That's all. Susie, I hope I've helped you. Thank you for calling. Guys, especially after a call like that, we went from HGTV to Dr. Phyllis. You are contributing at planetscum.live. Again, it's a pay what you can show. Help me help you help us all. Bryson, please come on camera. Jess, if you can. Forrest, if you can. This is who makes this all possible. But they never come on camera. I'm trying to hawk money to them. And they don't come, Forrest. We don't. And You're just, very kind to have us on. We're just not prepared to come on camera because we're usually not I on camera. People to know the operation that we're running. Yeah, absolutely. For country planets come down live. This is not free. I don't know what people. It's pay what you can, which I think is generous. We could put a paywall on here. We could do it, but we're not doing it. Gatsby, look at this. Look at Catsby. Look at this. <laughs> Should I get my cat for a second? We'll take a call. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, Jossie Joe. Jossie. Joe. I mean, Robbie, I haven't told you this yet, but my brother and his family who I'm staying with, they just got a cat colored the oh same my. way as Jossie Joe. Oh my God, I never see her coloring. She's a dilute calico. Jossie, is Two that months. Catsby? Two months old. Hi, Catsby. Hi, Catsby. He Hi, left because he heard Catsby. the door. <laughs> All right, oh. you want to take the next call? Yes, please. All right, we'll get out of your hair. We have got Dot from Chicago. Dot! Hey, Robbie. Look, this is the Dot. This is the surprise Dot call for me. Apparently. Dot, how are you? We've had, we've, we've been on a ride already this episode, no? Oh, yeah. This is, uh, this has been a ride. Uh, yeah, this has been a whole ride. Today has been a whole ride. Oh my God! What are you talking about? The stock market? I got you onto onto Robin Hood, and now look what's happening. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I made I I made a few dollars today. Oh good, very nice. What did you make on? Uh, I uh I like kind of saw the I saw the GameStop wave, and I rode the end of it. Made like twenty bucks. Can I tell you about GameStop? So the guy who made it. So my friend, shout out to Leanna Belinsky Baker. She is a reporter, was for Reuters for many years, and now she's at Bloomberg. She went to my high school. She lets me know that the guy who started GameStop went to my high school, two years older than me. Jewish kid, 
And you know what? He's on the board still of GameStop, and he's very happy. They tried to short his company. People weren't loving it. But it very, very interesting. Dot, would you? It's a lot of fun. My, uh, my father called me this morning and started reading me various Reddit comments. He's up to date with the Reddit. Was your dad part of this? Was he uh, no, the my father also discovered what Reddit was in the last two days. Nice. Nice. Reddit's happy. Oh, yeah. Reddit's having a great time. They're having a ball. Dot, do you need the dot call? This is the fork in the road of the dot call. This is, does dot want the call to be a dot thing? Do we take a call together? How are you feeling, dot? Uh, I think we can take a call together. I'm like, I'm mostly just, I'm vibing. I bought a good book the other day. Uh, that other thing we've talked about is going pretty cool. Okay, so, I'm uh, not bringing it up because I don't want to get in trouble that I said something I shouldn't. I put my foot in my mouth, which I do. So if you're, if you're wanting to elude, first of all, Dot, I will warn you. You elude once, shame Shame on somebody. You lose twice. Shame on me. I don't know what it is. Shame on who? Who's the shame with the fool me? Fool me once. No, uh, the, me. the shame me is probably shame on, on me at this point. There's a nice girl in Dot's life, and, and that's that's happening. Anyway, let's take the Dot call. Can I? The ask? Dot call. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell, Dot. <laughs> what do we have on the line? Oh, you can tell, you can ask anything you want, Robbie. Now, I oh, I just want one question: Is this virtual only, or have you guys been able to safely meet person wise? Uh, we we have safely met uh, person wise, uh, and uh, yeah. Well, I hear you. I hear you. Very happy. Mazel tov for Dot. In the comments, it's not an easy feat in COVID to be meeting and to be hitting it off. Okay? It only took, what, we're 10 months into it and we're figuring it out. Give it up for Dot in the comments. That's all we can say until the Dot call next week. We're going to be getting nuggets every week. you got to watch the show. Keep up to speed on the Dot call. I'll I'll say one other thing is that there's a girl watching this uh, in Chicago who is uh, definitely blushing. Oh wow! A watcher of a viewer, an audience, a fan of the show. The plot has well now because she figured out about the dot call. Wow, dot is bringing a very specific audience. The dot lover audience into the show, and we appreciate. We appreciate. We hope dot. All I could say is I hope that she's already followed me on Instagram and has been brought up to speed about the road to 10k on Instagram. And I hope she's hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Again, we are now on YouTube. Today's episode will be up by tomorrow evening. I am doing it myself. I have my own YouTube channel now. Ten months into the pandemic, we are figuring it out. You're subscribing on YouTube. Dot. Say it with me. Who do we have on the line? We have Lizzie on the line. Lizzie! Hey, Lizzie. Lizzie? Lizzie, are you there? Hi, Robbie. Hi, Dot. Hi. How are you? Welcome hey. to the Dot Call. I'm here. Hello. I'm so happy to be at the Dot Call with Robbie. How are you both? Good. How are you? How can we help you? I mean, I'm feeling great. This is such a beautiful show so far. Thank you. We've really had a roller coaster. You never know what people are going to call it. Sometimes I like non theme. Bryson's always like, let's do a theme. Let's get a banner. Was it? It's like, no, you guys call me. You have many, a multitude of issues and things to discuss. 
It's true. It's true. It's not financial advice that I need today. Exactly. Oh, gosh, it probably is too. And by the way, your hair looks nice. I need to mention that before I. Before Thank I you. Here. This is my at home. You know, I let I let the shorter hair. I have it's a very weird situation. Some hairs are long, some are short. I go to supercuts when I can. <laughs> well, it's working out for you. Thank and you. For us. All right, let me get to, let me get to it. I'm sorry, I'm stalling. So, so I I called you like a couple months ago after Sarah Vice. If you'll recall, I also have back problems and anxiety problems. Right. And I showed you my cat in our living room and stuff. <laughs> but so since then, I've had um, an MRI and an X-ray, and I've been referred to surgeons, and they have, you know, diagnosed me with this problem in my spine, which can only be fixed through surgery. Right. Um, so, you know, I saw two different surgeons, and I talked to one of my, like, orthopedic surgeon friends, and pretty much everybody's telling me the same thing. Um and so, you know, this last surgeon I said, saw, said, um, you know, it's the only thing that'll fix it, but, but I'll know if it's the right time. That was a month ago. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm feeling like it's, it's the right choice. And I am just I'm scared to make the call and say, let's do it. And, but I, I, but I do want to. And so, you know, I thought maybe you could like, maybe give me a little bit of a pep talk for that. Cause I'm trying to do it tomorrow. And also, you know, you've been through major surgery that you got to make a choice about. So, you yes. know, just wondering and about general advice on that. And tomorrow you are doing the call. Sorry, just to make sure I have it clear. You're doing the call to potentially set up the consult or the date of surgery, which will be at a later date. You're not going into surgery tomorrow. Right, right. So, right. No, I've had the consult and now it's like the balls in my court to call and say, okay, let's, let's get this thing going. So I'll probably have like another appointment where I can ask questions and stuff and then we'll schedule it. Let but, me also um, clarify that the surgery I had, for those of you who don't know, I had a double mastectomy, also known as top surgery. Um, it was a non, what I would consider low on the surgery risk for the reason that it was pretty topical. We were removing basically fat, mammary glands, right. um, which wasn't really dipping into my major organs. Um, I, before the surgery, was very right. passionate. I was right. like, I could feel my heart when I touch it here. I was like, could you make sure not to cut through my heart? It's right here. He's like, I got it. <laughs> okay. He was like, well, there's, there's lots of muscle and different things before we get there. But I got it. I said, it's right here. I, I got you. I know where it is. So I just want to say that the surgery <laughs> you are going through, spinal surgery, is a lot more invasive than the surgery yes. I was doing. The surgery I was doing, I'm sure, comes with... Um, you know, its own risk, its own complications or risk of complications or, or stuff like that. That said, surgery is surgery. Right. The most, the scariest mm -hmm. part of surgery is general mm -hmm. anesthesia. Okay. When you're going under, you're yeah. going under. They are artificially keeping you afloat to some extent. Okay. To, and some surgeries mm -hmm. to bigger extents than others, you know, if you're having heart surgery, obviously you're completely, um, you know, your heart is artificially beating. There's, there's more risk with that spinal. Right. I know is very delicate because of how delicate it is to get into the spine. My brother-in-law, I'll tell you, mm -hmm. is, is thinking of, a, a, has to get a similar, a surgery in his spine as well. He has severe back problems mm -hmm. and he's been waiting it off. Mm -hmm. He's actually waiting to switch on our insurance. I think he's in a similar boat to you where it's like, when you can do it, do it type thing because it'll just improve your quality yeah. of life. What I will tell you is yeah. surgery will be nervous maybe the day before you do surgery and the day of surgery. And then it, then it's out of your hands. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up and you feel better than ever. Now you don't feel great. Surgery recovery for me was like I was really like at times in a lot of uncomfort and not breathing. And obviously the surgery I had bound me. Um, and and mm -hmm. was extremely hard for me to breathe for a week. And I at times right. thought, was this worth it that I did this quote unquote elective surgery? You know, I didn't need it medically, but I needed it emotionally, which is medical. You know, mental health is yeah, is, is healthcare. So um I think yeah, you can be rest assured 
on one thing mm -hmm. is that they do this surgery all the time. Okay. Your life without right. surgery is right. going to be painful or worse off. Okay. You're taking a small risk. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're not having the surgery I'm having. You have your own different risks. Okay. Um, that said that the, the general checking in and general is, will feel the same. So I get what you're going to go through. You'll be nervous. Like, the day of the day before a little bit leading up to it but really other than that right. not, you wake up and it will be fun the the risk it's yeah. very I just, unless you're doing I think I can't. yeah mm -hmm. no go Sorry, ahead. i was gonna say like it's it's hard to even imagine you know feeling better and i think that's part of what i'm scared about right. is like i'm afraid to you know hope that it will work Right. And there's a possibility like what is, can you, can you just elaborate a little bit more so we can. Yeah. So you don't have to also the, to roll the your surgeons own. that I saw, they, you know, I, they basically said I have an 80% chance of this improving by 80% if I go for it. Um, it's you know, lot. it's usually relatively successful. Nice. Um, and you know, my, my case, uh, it looks pretty good for it. Like they have relative confidence that it's going to work for me. So like, I feel pretty good about that. It's more like the, the psychological side of things. It's, I've, I work so hard to accept being in pain all the time that it's scary to hope for something else. No, definitely. You know what? So then don't hope for something else. You're doing the surgery because I know that it'll make you better. <laughs> but even if you don't need, you don't need to start getting your hopes up. So don't hope for anything else. Be miserable, be whatever, live in the pain still. And then you're pleasantly surprised. Why not that approach? Then when it works, yes. and you're 80% better, which by the way, we'll nothing and live on surprise. 80% is like 100% better with anybody who's in pain. Yeah. Then like, you don't have to change your mind frame at all. Still be miserable. It's not going to die. It's not whatever <laughs> you need to do. Complain your whole way there, kicking and screaming, and then enjoy the fuck out of the experience after. It's clear right. when you hear in your voice, I you're going to do that. Surgery. You needed a little bit of a pep talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this right. is common. These people are, are experts at doing this. They got you. They said it's a high success rate. Great. It's not like you're going into one of these surgeries where there's a 50% chance. I just watched on Netflix. What was it called? Uh, not Clinton Hill. Whatever that, the, the, that hospital. Lennox Hill follows five surgeons. Okay. Where they do extensive brain surgeries and very difficult surgeries that have very low yes. success. It's a high success rate. Great. Now, if you want to complain about it, continue to be pleasantly surprised, low expectations, high, high satisfaction. That's fine. Okay. But it sounds like you're going to do All it. Right. You're going to call, gonna call, go for. Hard call. Not every call is roses. You're making a call for your health. You have to do this. You're doing it. You're not going to love the call. Make the call. Make the date soon. You're going to do it. We're going to hear from such a happier person. You're going to forget this whole thing. Dot, what do you think? Thanks, Robbie. No, not at all. Uh, hi, Lindsay. Uh, it's uh, Dot here. I had a thought that wasn't really addressed, and it kind of uh, sounded like you were talking about this, of like, uh, is it a correct assumption that you were like a little bit scared of like that the pain, like the thing kind of defines you and what are you without it? And you were saying of like it's working so hard to live with pain that like now it is a part of you, correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a part of me. And also I think it's just, it's again, really vulnerable to hope that I could feel better and not have to spend all this time and energy just trying to, get through the day more like does that make sense yeah and i want to yeah. just like a um, thing of like as a person who went through like a major life change of like right it, there's a reminder of it that the major life change will not fundamentally change who you are you will still mm -hmm. be and it is not it is right. not losing any part of yourself. It is becoming a version of yourself that works better. You know what I mean? I do. That that analogy makes sense to me and I appreciate that. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, and I understand you not wanting to get your hopes up. 
because you probably have before and then you were in pain again. So I would say you don't have to get your hopes up. I don't mind you being pleasantly surprised. I also think if you're attaching any part of your identity to pain, it's a really good point, Dot. Um, we're going to let go of that. You're not, that's not your identity. Okay. We're letting go. Yes, of no, that I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> we're letting go of any self sabotage identities. Okay. So that one, no, I would say no. in typical Robin no. Hoffman fashion, you're just going to say bye to that one. And you will be that without pain and you will be you without pain. And that will be the better you. It's like people who think they only need to abuse a substance to do comedy. Well, people who drink excessively or do drugs, or they have to, the only way they're funny is if they do this or that. They will find when they leave that stuff or if they manage it or whatever the problem is, whatever, I've known many people in my career, that they're right. just funny. And I know that many times where I've been like, oh, I need to cash my dream ticket. Many times I don't have time to do that. I do my show. I'm great. I'm great with one drink. I'm great without. There's no rule about it. Okay. Like Dot said, you are you with or without pain. You will, you will only experience life better as you yeah hopefully hopefully without fingers right. crossed <laughs> you don't know we will hope for you you you're like me you know to complain is to enjoy for me to some extent oh 100 percent. and so you continue to enjoy by complaining and we will get you on the hope front everybody in the comments who's on the hope front let us know now lizzie we wish you all the luck i appreciate it y'all for calling in. We can't wait to see you or to hear from you after the surgery. Good luck. Thank you. I'll keep you posted. I appreciate it. Can't wait. Thanks, Robbie. Thank Thanks, you. Dot. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dot. Give it up for Dot. Dot, our Dot call. People are loving the Dot call. It's a two for one. Yeah, it's a it's a twofer. I know that the uh, other one wasn't aired, but uh, I think uh, Malia, sound off in the comments if you think that that was good. Malia told yeah, me Malia you have messaged away. her after, and you fixed the whole thing. And Bryson, because we don't raise enough on this show, dropped the call because he pays for an hour exactly or whatever it is with this call service we have. And so we dropped it because it was over the hour. So you guys are contributing to planetscum.live so we don't ever drop a dot call ever again. Dot, thank you for never. joining us. We will see you next week. Guys, this has been a show. <laughs> this has been our show. Our show, our show. I wasn't sure which word I would say there. I blended the two. We're going to get off here. Before we do that, thank you to all the new people watching. You're not only watching, you're subscribing to me on YouTube. Hopefully Bryson will have a new button for that. We're following me, Bryson, get the scroll on Instagram. And finally, we're buying my merch on planetscum.live. Again, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to, you know, I, I'm not sure if this is for real or what the deal is, but we might be changing the name of this show. I think we'll talk about it next week. I might need to turn to you guys for what we think we should call this show that we've built together. I don't want the algorithms, the homophobic and anti-Semitic algorithms working against us. Until next week. Robbie, I'm Robbie, Robbie, yeah. I'm sorry. I have to point your attention to this. What? Sarasota in the comments. Wait, did she not get the puppy? No, she was potentially getting the puppy, and now she's getting the puppy. Sarah, you call us when you got the puppy. You hear me? I'm not getting off the show until she confirms in the comments. Bring up the comment. Sarah, when you get the puppy, will you call her with the puppy? Bryson, you know I wanted to do pet vice where everybody calls them with their puppies and their cats and whatever. We had we have people who have reptiles, Bryson. People watch the show, they have reptiles. That guy was great. Well, are you able to do video again? Okay, Sarah says she will. Sarah is calling in with a new puppy. So this week, we have a lot to think about. Think about what you would call this show. And let me know next week. Pray for Sarah. That she gets a great puppy. What kind of puppy is she going to get? Pray that she has it by next week and we could do the pup reveal. Wouldn't that be nice in this time? 
I've been Robbie Hoffman. Good Chavez. We'll see you next week. I'm going to be the first therapist to tell you exactly what to do. <laughs>